Thank you, everybody. Good morning. My name is Michelle Carb, and I'm the principal here at Melican. On behalf of our teachers, staff, and our students, I extend a warm welcome to parents, relatives, friends of our eighth grade class to our 2022 graduation ceremony. For those of you who have never attended a Melican graduation, you are lucky. We typically hold our graduation in our very tiny gym. It is crowded and extremely hot. Everybody cannot fit inside our gym, so Overflow attends our graduation virtually in the cafeteria. Somebody was looking out for us today because the rain has stopped and we are thrilled that we could be outside again today. One of the positive impacts of COVID is that last year, we finally held our first graduation outside. The feedback we received after the graduation last year was extremely positive. In fact, I was talking with a former eighth grade Melican graduate immediately following last year's ceremony. She graduated in 2000 or 2001, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm getting old, but it was a while ago. She mentioned that she still feels traumatized by her eighth grade graduation experience. <laughs> I'm quite certain that traumatizing students is not one of our goals for holding this ceremony. So I know this morning we received a lot of phone calls and I know there was some chatter on the Northborough Facebook Moms page, but I assure you we made the best choice, even if it does drizzle a little bit. We are hoping to hold all of our graduations outside moving forward. I'd like to thank Ms. Paris, as well as our young musicians who play in our jazz band for their music this morning. Music is an integral part of our lives, and I feel blessed that our students have continued with your support, their commitment to our music program. Will you please join me in another round of applause for our jazz band? Thank you for coming this morning. It's amazing to see all the family, friends, and educators. This is a reminder of just how important these young adults are to all of us. I'd like to also welcome Mr. Greg Martineau, Superintendent, and Dr. Stephanie Reinhorn, Assistant Superintendent. And before we continue, I'll invite Emily Ruiz, Ava Gukian, and Tylea Moran to lead us in the singing of our national anthem. Please stand and face the flag.
strikes and bright stars through the perilous night. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs burst. Thank you, that was beautiful. At this time, I'd like to thank Assistant Principal Jennifer Callahan for leading our eighth grade parent volunteers in organizing and implementing the first grade eight farewell dance since June of 2019. Thank you, Mrs. Callahan. And I wanna thank all of the parents who helped in the planning, donating, decorating, cleaning up, and chaperoning of the eighth grade farewell dance. It was a wonderful event. Every one of our eighth graders who attended had a blast. I'd like to invite Mrs. Denae up at this point to say a few words. So I'm just up here today um, to give a few thank yous and to say that this group of eighth graders, I'm sure from Alican, will be a group that will be remembered. Perhaps it's because they're going to be known as the COVID kids, the ones who went home on a Thursday in sixth grade to finish the year remotely, or the ones who came back in seventh as hybrid students or fully remote, or the ones who began eighth grade wearing masks but end of the year as normal as can be, thanks to um, Melick and staff enjoying their field day and the Hawaiian luau. This class has so many people to thank, all the teachers, the nurses, the custodians, the front office, and other staff members who they interact with daily. But um, today I'm here on behalf of the eighth grade parents to recognize three people who really made their time at Melick safe and memorable. So for Mrs. Carb, we wanna thank you for continuing the quality education for those three years, even when they were remote. Your weekly communications, if not more, with families was very appreciated, and the positive impact and support you gave the students and their families for these three years. Um, to Mrs. Callahan, who made such a close connection with so many of the students, Every day I saw you at drop off, you had a smile. Every time you interact, a positive attitude. You were able to safely bring back sports and clubs for our students. And um, on behalf of the eighth grade dance committee, a, a thank you. Just whatever you wanted, we wanted, you said, yes, let's make it happen. So thank you for everything you did. Um, and lastly, to Mrs. Moranzi. <laughs> Being a middle school guidance counselor is challenging, but throw, throw it into a pandemic. Um, your daily videos in sixth grade were watched by so many of us. Your countless Canvas messages that you sent, helping the kids feel better whenever they were having a tough time. Your availability to our students, whether it was a formal meeting or a quick check-in. And I heard that you were kind of tons of fun when you showed up to class to hang out with the kids. Thank you really for being a positive influence on our students.
and I don't want to take too much time, but I just have one more little thanks, um, and that is for sweet Betty, because in addition to the adults, we really thank Betty for her comfort and cuddles and everything she's done. That was unexpected, so uh, give me just a second. <clears throat> Okay, now my message to our eighth graders. All three of your middle school years have been impacted by a global pandemic during your sixth grade year, as Mrs. Denae just mentioned, in March of 2020, as none of us will ever forget, school closed for the rest of the year. Yes, there were online options for those of you who chose to do them, but the pandemic created interrupted learning and interrupted opportunities for social and emotional growth. During your seventh grade year, we began with so many schedules, I couldn't keep track of them. We were remote for two weeks, and then we transitioned to hybrid learning. Mondays were remote for everybody. Students were organized into cohort. Who got in what cohort? Who knew? One cohort attended Wednesdays and Fridays, one Tuesdays and Thursdays. Oh, and then there were the times we went all remote for a couple days here and there because of the uptick in COVID. Many students chose SARP for the year or standalone remote. Everyone who was in person wore a mask. We were asked to remain six feet away from others and told repeatedly to wash our hands. Some bathroom stalls were closed. Water fountains were still closed. This feeling of, of staying away from everybody else led people to feel isolated even when we were in person. After April vacation last year, we were able to be in school together, all of us, but we were still masked and asked to keep our distance. Eighth grade began with everyone wearing masks and continued distancing from one another. This was challenging for everybody. Teachers continued leading classes from the front of the classroom. Over time, we were allowed to get closer to one another but COVID still loomed and shaped our interactions with others. And then after February vacation this year, we were told we could take off our masks, finally. Some of us continued to wear them, which was perfectly fine, but it sure felt odd to see everyone's faces after all those months of having them covered up. I overheard a group of eighth graders sitting in the guidance office saying how weird some of the adults in the buildings looked without their masks. <laughs> Um, don't you think you all looked a little weird to us after two years of not seeing your faces? You may have heard that students are behind because of COVID. I would ask behind what? Behind whom? There's no shortage of articles describing the learning loss experienced by students throughout the pandemic. While I'm certain there's some validity to these claims, I will argue that you are actually ahead of where students your age were 10 years ago in many ways. First, you are extremely resilient. You have learned alone, home over Zoom. You've learned how to hear one another and your teachers when they're talking through masks. I still can't hear people through masks. You learned how to attend school in person two days a week, work independently for two days, you adjusted to wearing masks, not wearing masks, social distancing, no social distancing, COVID testing, and all sorts of other demands placed on us. Next, aside from being extremely resilient as a group, you are much more tech savvy than any other group of eighth graders has ever been. From Zoom and Google Meets and Canvas and Google Classroom and the various apps you and your teachers use regularly to learn, not to mention all the time some of you have spent on Sports Center. TikTok and Snapchat, trust me, you're very advanced compared to the previous eighth graders when it comes to technology. Additionally, you are much more inquisitive than eighth graders who came before you. Why are we doing this? What is in this for me? Are common refrains we've heard from you. But you have learned to truly question the world around you, and that is admirable. It includes questioning the adults in your world. You all engaged in civic, civics action projects this year, and became invested in your research, your surveys, and your projects. You have a voice and you have learned how to use it. Finally, you are more independent than other eighth graders have been over the years. 
Again, some of you have had to learn home alone without adult supervision. You are self-sufficient. You rely on the tools you have, including your devices, your friends, and your environment. The jury is still out on whether or not you are behind where previous eighth graders were over the years academically. But one thing is for sure, you are no further behind than any other eighth graders in the world. The pandemic shaped all of their middle school experiences too. You are ready for high school. Use the skills you have learned over the course of the pandemic to adjust to the new demands and the new expectations. Be patient with your peers and with yourself. Take risks and try new things. Remember, you are resilient, tech savvy, inquisitive, and super independent. Take risks, try everything that comes your way. Enjoy every second of the journey because as Ralph Waldo Emerson said, quote, life is a journey, not a destination, end quote. Enjoy every step of the way. Congratulations to our eighth graders. At this time, we invite Ms. Paris and our jazz band to perform again for us.
Thank you for that. While the jazz band is cleaning up, um, I will ask our banner creators to come up. So it's a tradition for our eighth grade class to create a banner that will hang in our gym. This banner is made by eighth graders who work with their art teacher, Mrs. Hansbury. So today I would like to invite Ava Gukian, Lauren Kenny, Tylea Moran, and Bella Dos Santos up front to unveil this year's eighth grade banner. I'm sure you can't see it, but it says um, out of the darkness and it's beautiful. So if you get a chance before you leave us today and you want to walk up and take a look, it's, it's beautiful. Thank you everybody for your work on that and thank you to Mrs. Hansbury. At this point, I'd like to invite Gabby Richard up to say a few words. teachers, staff, parents, families, friends, and most importantly, my eighth grade graduates. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Gabby Richard. As I'm standing in front of all of you, I see many familiar faces. Almost everybody in this building I have connected with in a special way, and I would not be the same person I am today without any of you. Malkin Middle School has been the best experience of my life. I made so many new friends and met so many people. I honestly didn't know what to expect coming to middle school, but I've made my absolute best memories here. This group of students and staff have been the most kind and welcoming people. Malkin has always been a place where I feel like I belong. The staff of the school are truly wonderful and they do everything they can to make sure their students feel safe and supported. Malkin Middle School is a place that I haven't felt judged at. And to be honest, Malkin feels like my second home. I am probably one of the few students you will ever hear this from, but I actually love coming to school. I adore everything about it. The environment, the people, the classes, and the staff. Every little thing here has made me appreciate this astounding school. There's never been a dull moment at Melican. All of these memories have been unforgettable. A few of my amazing memories have come from my homeroom, section 8-7. My homeroom this year has been one that I will never forget, and I don't think our teachers could forget us no matter how hard they try. 8-7 made every day memorable. Being in this homeroom has shown me what true happiness is, and I'm forever grateful for all the laughter. I don't ever want to leave MMS behind, and to be honest, I don't think I'll ever truly be ready to graduate and leave this fantastic school. In my opinion, graduating means growing up. We are parting ways with the people we've been with every day for three years and we are moving on. We're going to have to meet new people and, meet, and go down different paths in life, and to me, that's the scariest thing ever. I hate change, and I don't know what I'm going to do without seeing all of you every day. But I know everything will be okay. Because if there's one thing the school has taught me, it's that everything will work out over time. And time is all we really have. Most things are temporary and they come and go, but one thing we will always have is time, and that's all we actually need. Many terrific memories have been made here, but if I had to pick one of my all-time favorites, it would probably be eating lunch with my friend and some of our teachers. <coughs> I will always love and hold on to this precious memory. Throughout the school year, a lot happened, and at times my friend and I did not feel comfortable eating lunch in the cafeteria with the rest of our peers. But a few of our teachers were there for us, and they let us eat lunch with them whenever we needed to. This experience was very important. I know it seems like a small gesture, but to me, it meant everything. These amazing teachers made me feel valid and like I had somebody there for me. They made me feel like I could reach for the stars and that I was capable of doing anything I put my mind to. They made my friend and I feel safe and like we weren't alone. We felt as if we had a voice and we didn't have to be silenced. And I will forever cherish that and treasure it very close to my heart. We may be graduating today and leaving this phenomenal school behind, but it doesn't mean we have to leave our memories behind also. I still remember our fifth grade graduation like it was yesterday. So many of us couldn't wait to get to middle school and grow up. Now look at us. We're in eighth grade and the younger kids look up to us as role models and consider us the big kids. But little did our fifth grade selves know that middle school would go by in the blink of an eye. Before we knew it, we were all grown up and here we are graduating, again. Sometimes I wish I could go back in time and enjoy my childhood a bit more and not rush through it. We have so much time ahead of us to get older, but we can only be young for so long. 
Other times, I look back and not only how far I've come, but how far we've all come together as a whole, and I'm glad that we finally made it. Here we all are, the oldest students in the school, but we couldn't have done it with the help and support from our teachers and fellow classmates. Yes, we made it through eighth grade and we survived middle school, which some might say are the hardest years of our lives, but our time and experiences in middle school were quite different than anybody else's. In March of our sixth grade year, the school building was shut down due to a virus that soon turned into a global pandemic. At the time, we knew nothing about COVID-19, and we were all so excited for what was supposed to be a two-week break. But this virus ended up severely impacting our lives. COVID shut everything down and gave us all much longer than a two-week break. This tragic virus took away the end of our sixth grade year, and it severely impacted our seventh grade year. And when we were finally able to go back to school in person, it was not the same school we remembered at all. We were split up from our friends, and the school was divided into two separate sections known as cohort A and cohort B. Our cohorts were only able to go to school twice a week, and we had to learn to adjust without our acquaintances in the other cohort. On April 26, 2021, we were finally able to go back to school as one big group. School was still set up very abnormally, but we were all just thankful to be connected as a whole again. Soon, seventh grade came to an end, and we were on summer break, just patiently waiting for September 1st, our first day of eighth grade. Eighth grade started, and it was the most ordinary year we've experienced in a while. The first half of eighth grade was still a bit, a bit unusual, but we continued to push through. No matter what happened this year, the amazing staff at Melkin has never given up on us. These teachers kept pushing me and my fellows when I just wanted to stop trying and give up. I remember in the middle of seventh grade, I didn't go to school for about two months due to COVID and other reasons. But my first day back at school after I was out, everybody was so happy to see me. My teachers sat down with me and helped me develop a plan to get me caught up on my assignments. The staff was very patient with me and they gave me as much help and support as I needed, and they never lost hope in me. And that's something I will always appreciate. My teachers knew that I was capable of completing my schoolwork and getting back on track, and that's exactly what I did thanks to them. Through all three of my middle school years, nobody in this building has given up on me, and that taught me one of the most important things I know today. You don't give up on people when things get hard. You don't lose hope in someone when they need you the most. My time at Melkin has been very memorable, exciting, and incredible, but sadly this journey ends here. Melkin has given all of its students the foundation and building blocks that we came here for, and we will continue to build off this experience throughout our next four-year journey in high school. MMS has not only prepared me for high school, but has prepared me and many others for life beyond high school. Our teachers have prepared us for challenges coming our way. We may not know what these challenges are, but we do know how to tackle them. We will all go so far and achieve so much in life. Every person here has such a big imagination, and we can do whatever we put our minds to. The sky's the limit. Today we graduate from Melkin, leaving behind the school, our friends, our classmates, our sports teams, and the truly amazing teachers and staff. Some of you may not feel ready to graduate, and some others may want to leave and never come back. But at the end of the day, each and every one of us are graduating together. And I know that every eighth grade in the audience can do this. So let's do it together. Thank you, Gabby. That was wonderful. At this point, I'll invite Mrs. Getchell and our eighth grade chorus to come up and provide some entertainment for us.
while our chorus is taking all of their seats, I'll ask Ben Insult to come up to say a few words. school years were a journey of many varieties, a journey of lessons, discussions, remote school, and adaptation. We truly embody the spirit of adaptation, channeling our human ability to grow and change. Many of us are glad we have reached this destination. <coughs> However, this is not truly a destination. We still need to keep moving on to high school and beyond, but perhaps that's a good thing. My favorite author, Brandon Sanderson, once wrote, and so, does the destination matter, or is it the path we take? I declare that no accomplishment has sustenance nearly as great as the road used to achieve it. We are not creatures of destinations. It is the journey that shapes us. Our calloused feet, our backs strong from carrying the weight of our travels, our eyes open with a fresh delight of experiences lived. And we, the Melican class of 2022, have truly lived these experiences. Think of sixth grade. Think of our worries and hopes for the new year. Think of all the new friends we made. We each pave our own path in life, and those paths diverge frequently, but they also come together at various points while walking through the jungle of life. Middle school is an example of a shared journey, and we are definitely more robust than we once were. Our backs are stronger from carrying a 30 pound backpack. But metaphorically, our backs are stronger. Stronger from the things we have endured. Stronger from the things our friends and classmates have felt. Stronger from the things the school and world at large has felt. Fortunately, the way of our travels is not something we carry alone. Each person here is close to someone. It might be a student, a teacher, or someone else entirely. But we all walk the path with someone else who can shoulder the weight but only for a time. We still must carry the weight on our own inevitably, but for a time we can walk with the same spring on our steps when having trouble when someone else carries part of our weight. The path of life is a long and somewhat difficult, sometimes difficult one. If everyone walks along a completely flat road with mango trees every five feet that pose no challenge, it would be easy. Being easy, however, is not what makes a path worth walking. It is the challenge that makes it worthwhile. The view from an easy path is never as gratifying as a difficult, tall mountain path. So per I personally am grateful for the challenges of middle school. Although it might have been hard, we have reached a peak in the long mountain range of life, and the view is wonderful. I also want to talk about the change in our beliefs. We are different than when we first set foot in this school. People may think that it's due to the pandemic, and in part it is, but we would have changed regardless. This is for one reason. Middle school is weird and hard. It's a period of transition, growth, awkward moments, and things that sounded good in your head, but when you spoke them, they sounded weird. These are facts of life and are unavoidable. We also had to deal with a pandemic and technology that would not always do what it was supposed to. Brandon Sanderson reflected on this in the quote, it's easy to believe in something when you win all the time. Loss, the losses are what define a man's faith. We have lost one of the most precious things that we have, and yet we did not realize it. We lost time, time that could be spent interacting, growing, learning, and changing. But we must not worry about what we have lost. We should worry, no, not worry, ponder the faith, knowledge, and skills we gained. Perhaps we gained many things and did not even realize it. In ancient times, people took a long journey alone to reach enlightenment, to reach true knowledge of himself. Even during remote schooling, we were not truly alone as we had our technology to communicate. We might have physically distanced, but we did not emotionally distance. We t grew together into a society, admittedly one with less practice at handshakes. But we still <laughs> gained a lot from our separated togetherness. We might not have reached some majestic truth about the universe, but each and every one of us reached the truth about something greater, 
ourselves. It might be a skill, a hobby, or some other realization, but we are all walking away having grown in some way. Finally, another author, J.R.R. Tolkien, yes, I read a lot, once wrote, not all who wander are lost. We may wander down this road of our lives, slowly, quickly, or somewhere in between, blazing a trail through the jungles of society. But we are not lost, as the difference between being lost and being an explorer is a purpose, a purpose to grow, evolve, change, and learn about ourselves. Or just an intent, I'm sorry, if there is one thing to take away from middle school, it is this, we must walk with purpose. Or just an intent to find purpose, for otherwise, we don't have a purpose beyond our smartphones, cars, and technology. I'd like to thank the administrators, teachers, staff, and students for making our time at Melkin what it was. And thank you to our family and for friends for supporting us along the way. Congratulations to the class of 2022. Thank you, Ben, that was wonderful. At this point, we will ask Ms. Paris and our eighth grade concert band to share our last musical selection with us. Thank you. 
I would like to thank Ms. Paris, Mrs. Getchell, and all of our young musicians today for sharing their talents with us. Thank you. And at this point, we are going to be calling each section up to receive their certificates. I will ask that you hold your applause until all students in the section have been acknowledged. Before we call up our sections, I'd like to recognize our team leaders for this year, Mrs. Senior and Mr. Rudloff. As teachers come up, I will ask them to introduce themselves and then begin reading the names. Mrs. Callahan and I will hand out the certificate. So section 8-1, you are first. Good morning, I'm Mrs. Jamison, and this is section 8-1. Okay, here we go, Preston Biamu. Coria Bakari. Cameron Citro. Alexandra Clifford. Connor Eben. Paige First. Caitlin Guerin, Lana Ingerslev, Leon Ku, Avery Lynn, Clara Lynn, Carolyn, Jatin Murra, Raj Moore. Julia Nigerian, Madison Nicosia, Chelsea Sains, Jackson Stiles, Adidia Tripathi, and Andrew Zeiger. Congratulations. Austin Jones, <laughs> Julia Landgren, Jaden Leone, Therese Moore, Trey Morgado, Mia Murphy, Will Pan, Parker Redfern. Bella Reyes, <laughs> Marina Rizpala, Manny Rojas, Dylan Steele, Cooper Veron, Thomas Welch, and Ali Young. Congratulations, A2. <laughs> Oh my god, 
I'm Miss Jones, and this is 8-3. Calliope Arventelli. Ella Behrens. Anthony Bassard. Ethan Chan. Ben Cimarelli. Tanmay Darji. J.V. Ferreira. Abby Keats. Lauren Kenny. Eli Kanarski. Gabe Mendelson. Gilbert Prepetit. Haley Reese. Hannah Renzi. Kartiki Sarangdar. Hannah Stiles. Alina Schwartz. Go, Alina, go! Ishida Are. Aurelius Veglia. Carlos Vera. Emma Vidal. And Abby Wood. Congratulations, A3. Hello, I'm Miss Price, half of Eight Forest Home Moon. Miss Angela couldn't make it today. Um, and this is Eight Four. Angelina Bastos. <laughs> Lucas Campos. <laughs> Parker Cardillo. <laughs> Nico Conway. <laughs> Lucas Stone. Victoria DeFreitas. Ava DeSimone. Anna Victoria Dutra. Paige Faulkner. Jordan Freshman. Isabella Gascamp. Matthew Lai. Sophia Lalau. Rogan Mulcurran, Connor Ostagai, Derek Pryor, Christopher Ribeiro, Emily Ruiz, and Cy Trombley.
This is section 8-5. Anna Belleville. Nina Beckler. Tristan Conti. Mateus Da Silva. Adriana Dom. Brooke Furlow. Jane Furlow. Madison Himmelman. McKenna Lindblom. Tylia Moran. Mia Nikosha. Leilani Postizi. Nicholas Robbins. Henry Rogers. Samuel Whirlin. Brady Young. Congratulations, Big Five. Section 86, Trent Bedard, Christian Campero, Nikki Chacharoni, Isabella Dos Santos, Hannah Dunlevy, Ava Gukian, Faith Harrington. Faith Harrington. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Ben Insull. Dan Milano. Hunter Moniz. Ishan Knight. Robert Nyago. Will Nealon. Ibrahim Rowe. Mahika Safner. Fizza Shakur. And Zarif Tamjid. Section 8. I'm Miss Adams, and this is 87. <laughs> Natalie Alvarez. Yeah, Natalie! <laughs> Stephanie Burnsby. <laughs> Eligio Coniglio. Yeah! Sydney Defoe. <laughs> Marcus Gonsalves. <laughs> Jaliana Jimenez. Samira Kutlambatova, Jared LaBelle, Brandon Lemus, Nick Lyons, Megan McCormick, Jacob Nealon, James Perez, Emma Persons, Gabby Richard, Walter Rogers, Giovanna Santos, Kylie Ward, 
and Caroline Yang. Congratulations, 8-7. Dragoni, Charlotte Okima, William Virgil, Edie Garton, Mimi Lee, Jacob LeBeau, Josh LeClaire, Kara Leonard, Zeeland Mararian. Michael Marroquin. Grady Meal. Altea Mohila. Jeremy Moyer. Gavin Murphy. Hannah Nealon. Ryan Regan. Riley Sylvia and Thea Sun Jeff Tan Alexandra Varnes and Delaney Walker We have a few awards to give out. It has become tradition for us to honor some of our eighth graders at our graduation ceremony. We have three awards to present today. For each award, teachers nominate students and then teachers vote once all the nominations are in. Mrs. Carol O'Hara was a special teacher who worked here at Mellican for 30 years teaching art to students who flourished under her guidance. She passed away unexpectedly in 2004 when she was still very much a beloved part of our Mellican community. Mrs. O'Hara made a huge difference in the lives of students. We established this award as a way to honor her legacy this award goes to an eighth grader who exemplifies some of the qualities that made Mrs. O'Hara unforgettable. Those qualities include compassion, tolerance, kindness, and acceptance. This year's Carol O'Hara Award winner is Tylea Moran. was renamed the Robert E. Mellican Middle School in 2002 in honor of Mr. Mellican. This next award goes to an eighth grader who exemplifies some of the qualities 
that made Mr. Melikin unforgettable. Spirited leadership, good sense of humor, standing up for what is right. Mr. Melikin was a teacher here at the middle school for many years, and then he was our superintendent. He had a significant impact on our district. This year's Robert E. Melikin Award goes to Cooper Davis. We added a third award a few years ago, established in memory of a former Spanish teacher here at Melikin. Mrs. Lisa Kaplan passed away on November 23rd, 2015, after a brief illness. Mrs. Kaplan had an unparalleled zest for life and a caring spirit, always bringing out the best in everyone around her. This award goes to an eighth grader who exemplifies some of the qualities that made Mrs. Lisa Kaplan unforgettable. Enthusiasm, generosity, passion, positivity, optimism, optimism and inspiration. This year's Lisa Kaplan Award goes to Kartiki Saringdar. When we finish in a few minutes, our eighth graders will head back over to the tennis courts where you can meet up with them. Feel free to take pictures if you'd like. Obviously, it's raining a bit, but if you want, there's some signs out front. You can take some photos. Thank you all for joining us today. These past three years have been challenging, to say the least. And we thank you for continuing to support these amazing young adults. We wish our eighth graders the best as they embark on their next journey. You eighth graders have left your mark here at Melican, and we will miss you. Thank you, everybody. Our homeroom teachers will lead our sections back to the tennis courts.